I, I hesitate to call this a film review because I hesitate to call Artemis Fowl a film. I mean, I think it had a plot. That's it. That's my intro. Hi, I'm Amanda and you're watching Small Entertainment and I never read the Artemis Fowl books. I just couldn't get into them when I was younger. I tried to right around the time that I just kind of walked through the entirety of the original Percy Jackson series in about a week. I don't know what it was. I just couldn't get through the first Artemis Fowl book, but I was excited for the Artemis Fowl movie because I am always a fan of films that had messy productions or were at one point deemed unreleasable. <laughs> Mainly I like seeing movies when they're considered unreleasable. Like I am so excited for New Mutants because like they had all of these reshoots planned. This movie was supposed to come out forever ago, but they just kept putting off and then they recently admitted, oh yeah, no, we didn't do any of the reshoots, which means they're releasing a movie that they already weren't happy with and were already planning on reshooting to the point of adding a whole new character. Like, I'm so excited. I hope they stick to this release date. Honestly, I don't think they will, but I finally got out of the habit of just routinely checking Disney Plus almost every day just to see if they just dumped New Mutants on there. If they haven't, they might, I don't know. Also, I, will do some questionable things in order to be able to see the Tom Holland Daisy Ridley movie Chaos Walking that has been deemed unreleasable. There's talk that they may release it in 2020. I'm not holding out hope because apparently the director unfollowed Tom Holland on Instagram and I need to know what happened there. I need to see this movie, okay? It's very important. But I also like movies that have messy or cursed productions that have a bunch of rumors surrounding the productions before release. Cats was bad, but I at least had fun watching it because it was like fun bad, okay? I went and saw Cats four times. I went and saw it once by myself and then I told my friends about it and they were like, there's no goddamn way it's that bad. And I was like, yeah, it's horrible. Do you wanna go see it with me? It was great. God, I miss the fucking movies. Also, if you guys ever want a video on Doolittle, let me know because, oh my god, some of the rumors, there was a full Reddit thread that allegedly came from one of their animators for the CGI animals that, like, exposing the production and what a mess it was. They fired their director before doing reshoots and hiring two more on. Nothing can describe the glee that I felt making my dad go see that with me at 10 o'clock at night because he would not have believed me if I'd come home and told him how bad it was. The horrified and confused look on my dad's face throughout that movie wonderful. Also, Father's Day is coming up this weekend in the US. Here's your reminder. When they showed the final trailer, I believe for Artemis Fowl and announced the like May release date for 2020, I was very confused because I thought the movie came out in like 2018. It was actually supposed to come out in 2019, but they had announced the 2019 release date and then postponed it a couple months later, which makes me think that they showed the film in test audiences and it was poorly received. I know that the teaser trailer they released was really poorly received or at least criticized heavily online. Originally when I was watching the movie, uh, before I went back and watched some of the trailers again, I was tempted to say that they had added a couple of scenes to what they ended up releasing because there were a couple of scenes where the main actor, Fredia Shaw, it did kind of look like his face was fuzzy, almost implying that they had done some CGI to kind of make him look a little younger maybe. Like there was times between when they filmed and so they needed to kind of age him down a little bit. But then I went back and watched the trailers and now I'm fairly certain they just kind of cut a bunch of stuff out because Wow. The plot is very basic and boring to the point that I was like, God, nothing's happened yet. When are we going to like get into the story? When are we going to get into like the quest or, you know, trying to find his dad? Like, when are we going to get into that? And then I checked and I was halfway through the movie. So we have Artemis Fowl Jr. and Artemis Fowl Sr. Artemis Fowl Sr. goes on a business trip-ish and Artemis is like supposedly knows what this is about, but then also doesn't know what this is about. Artemis Sr. is kidnapped off of his boat. The news gets a hold of it and it's announced that he is missing, maybe dead. Personally, I would probably assume that he was dead just because I feel like that's typically the outcome of finding a boat in the ocean abandoned. Um, that or they're trying to fake their death, in which case you might be found. I just feel like the boat option is always stupid. But also in these newscasts, they're like, oh, he is, um, suspected in all of these robberies. He is a person of interest. He might be a mastermind criminal. But the movie doesn't give context for that leap to be made. It's like, oh, he's suspected of all of this. Okay, where did him going missing and him being accused of stealing all these, including the Rosetta Stone? Why do they always go for the Rosetta Stone? Has anyone ever actually tried to like steal it or damage it though? I'm not trying to give you ideas. Like don't do it. But has anyone tried to? just asking for a friend. Artemis and Domovoy, who is a security guard slash butler slash not a butler, don't call him a butler, it's a whole thing. Okay, we're gonna find your father. And they show this hidden study area 
And then somehow they crack this code after being in there for two minutes. They introduce Juliet, who is his niece, but they introduce her as like, oh, she fights too. But then all she's there for is to bring people food. In the context of the movie, there's no indication that Domovoy was having an issue with Artemis, that he would need another 12 year old to come in and like wrangle him. Also geniuses or not, kids are mean, especially to each other. Bringing another 12 year old to wrangle a 12 year old, I don't know how that was gonna work. I skipped over talking about the Oculus because it's a MacGuffin. It doesn't seem to do a whole lot for the plot aside from being there and so I can only deduce that Disney added it so they had something else to make into a toy later. There's Holly Short, she's in the shadow of her father who may or may not have been a traitor, and then they have Judy Dench's character whose name I forgot. I'm very confused by her character because they kind of like set her up to be like the bad guy but then she's not the bad guy, she's the good guy and then we're supposed to be rooting for her. I'll talk about the acting in a minute because choices were made. Artemis and Domovoy kidnap Holly Short when they are like staking out this hill and just hoping that she's gonna show up. Or she does because plot. They trank her and they kidnap her and they're hoping that the fairies come. They all do because they know about Foul Manor and how terrible and dangerous he is. But it's like, we don't know. It just kind of looks like they brought an army to a knife fight, right? And also in the film, it's like a weird choice because there's always that, at least belief, it seems amongst everyone, that Holly may or may not be like her father and may or may not go against them and be a traitor. Oh, she's been kidnapped, maybe. She's at Foul Manor. Okay, how do you know she's been kidnapped? How do you not know that she's just one of them? But no, they go into a full extraction. They don't even know if this fairy has betrayed them or not, but they're just all gung-ho to bring their full army in. Judy Dench's character is like, we're going, everyone. Holly threatens Artemis. Artemis kind of sort of threatens Holly. It's kind of hard to be threatening if your face isn't moving. Immediately bond over their daddy issues, decide that they can trust each other. They already established in the film that Holly as a fairy can manipulate people's minds. They're wearing sunglasses so that she can't do that. She's like threatening them, going back and forth, and he's like, can I trust you? And then takes off his glasses. You're telling me this kid is meant to be a genius, a criminal mastermind, and he did something as stupid as trusting his prisoner within the first 10 minutes? Bad choices all around, apparently. Anyway, Holly and Artemis are now friends now. I'm definitely jumbling up this continuity, but it doesn't matter. The fairies come and it's just Domovoy and Artemis, but they have Officer Short's weapons fighting the fairies in this weirdly shot scene and it's like, okay, are they all just gonna come at them like maybe two on two? Like there's never really a chance where it's like, hey, we have this whole army. We have all these weapons. We're in a time bubble for some reason. Kind of later implied that like a lot of time had passed but really nothing happened. But they have a really weird fight scene. It's really terribly choreographed. It's not awesome at all. Domovoy is set up to be kind of like this incredible fighter. I know because Josh Gad told us and we'll talk about that in a second. Um, but then the only real time we really see him like fight, fight is in this scene. But there was really no moment where I was like, heck yeah, Domovoy, get those fairies. And it's over immediately. Like it's like, okay, we fought like five of them. I have the gun. I'm gonna threaten you through this, send someone in to negotiate. Where did this 125 million budget go? I'm assuming it went to everything that was left on the cutting room floor. But anyway, Judy Dench comes in, they kind of discuss things. No one knows who has the Aculos. They're looking for the Aculos. They stole the Aculos, blah, 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 the fucking Aculos. The fairies get Mulch Diggums, who's a tall drawer played by Josh Gad. Again, I'm gonna talk about the acting in a second, but really quick. I just need to know if this was in the books or if this was a stylistic choice done by production for the movie. In the book, does Diggums eat dirt to tunnel so forcefully that it projects out of his rectum immediately. I don't need details, just say yes or no and I'll know what you're talking about. The fairies get Diggums to tunnel into Foul Manor because the fairies can't enter into Foul Manor without being invited in because I guess the fairies follow the same rules as vampires. Gets inside and then he himself locates a secret safe and finds the Aculos. The Aculos was there the whole time. Yay, less money to spend on other sets by going to other locations. We just get to stay in South Foul Manor the entire time. Yay! This was directed by Kenneth Braun, who also made Thor. So they basically kind of recreated uh, the destroyer scene in the first Thor film by having the fairies introduce a giant troll to eat and attack everyone inside the house. I'm fairly certain this was meant to be the fight scene for the whole movie because not much happens after that. And it was just really weird and really hard to follow. Like Juliet's gone half the time and then surprise she's there, but then, oh no, we have to save Juliet. But she's trying to fight off the troll. Holly's stuck half the time. I'm assuming because they didn't want to have to spend more money trying to CGI uh, her flying around half of the fight. Diggums has decided that he's just like gung-ho to be friends with them and is helping them and is like protecting the Oculus for them. This ends with Domovoy getting like crushed and then he's dying. But surprise, he's not dead. 
because Holly gets her magic back even though the fairies had turned it off before because fuck Holly. Because there was like this weird double agent fairy who was like working with the villain whose name I forgot, which is why I haven't mentioned them this whole time, the kidnapper who kidnapped Artemis' father. And the time bubble that they were all in is collapsing and they're like, oh my God, get out. It's like ripping the fairies through portals. They're being thrown through the air through this time space. It looks completely uncomfortable, but it's hard to tell if they're in pain or not. Artemis Fowl, Juliet, and Dom Voigt's like, take cover. The time thing collapses. And then it kind of looks like a couple of days pass. And then next thing we know, Artemis is just walking through the house like, okay, we're fine now. Time bubble collapsing was meant to be the ticking clock and it had no outcome. It was just like, okay, here's all this buildup. And then surprise, everyone's fine. Holly's here now, we're gonna use the Aculos to get Artemis Sr. back, great, Artemis Sr.'s back. We don't even have to meet the villain. And then they go and break Diggums out of an interrogation cell because he was the narrator this whole time and now it's real that he's been working with Artemis Fowl Jr. and Sr. and they're like trying to prove the existence of fairies. I'm sorry, what was the point of like showing his ears to show the point of ears? Was that to show that he's like part dwarf, part fairy? And that's the movie, the end. God, what to criticize, where to start? I do like bad movies. Like I said, I went and saw Cats four times. It's not just because I wanted to put other people through it. Cats wasn't good, but it was fun. Artemis Fowl didn't feel like a finished film. It felt like I was watching half a movie or like the pilot episode for a limited series. The plot is basic, the action is limited. For a film that involves a young boy learning that magic is real and having to use magic to save his father, the magic use itself is very sparse. Again, the Aculos is a MacGuffin. It has the ability to bring back Artemis Sr. And then supposedly it was too powerful to be in the hands of the fairies. But then at the end of it, Holly goes against her dead father's wishes, which was to, you know, get the Aculos away from the fairies because it's too powerful for them. And she brings it back to the fairies. What was the point of Artemis Sr. telling us that Holly's dad wasn't a traitor and he just didn't trust the fairies and it was for the safety of everyone for the Aculos to not be with the fairies? We're not getting a sequel, but let me know if this was the deal in the books. Um, the villain that kidnaps Artemis Sr. Uh, mentions Holly's father and it's like, say hello to him for me. We never find out who that villain is. So I mean, based on what we saw and the fact that we never see Holly's dad, I am assuming that Holly's dad is actually that person because it's like, you took something from me, but there's no indication that the villain ever actually had the Aculos. They just want the Aculos. Anyway, that's my prediction that Holly's dad faked his death and that he is the villain. But moving on from the Aculos, Disney, I hope that the Aculos plushie is gonna be worth this terrible plot device. I criticized the story and how I said it felt rushed in like half of a movie. So I'm assuming you can gather that there was zero character development. So like the film did, we're gonna steam past characters and focus on the acting. I do feel bad for Ferdia Shaw. He is the actor playing Artemis Fowl. He is very young and this is his first credited role. I hope he has a future in the industry ahead of him. But because this is a job that he was paid for, I am gonna criticize his acting in Artemis Fowl. If you've ever seen Lily Reinhardt on Riverdale, she does this thing somehow, and I still don't fully know how she does it, but she is able to move her face a lot while still keeping her voice very monotone. Like, oh my God, what are you doing? What are you talking about? Like her voice is very monotone, but her face is going on a journey. I am definitely not doing it correctly, but that is something that she does as Betty on Riverdale. But in Artemis Fowl, I can't do an Irish accent, so we're not even gonna try it. For Dia Shaw doesn't seem to move his face much when he is in this role. He sometimes raises his voice when he's trying to convey something important. Like, where is his dad? Why are they saying these things about his dad? And then also when Domovoy is dying, someone who basically raised him, he's crying like this, but his face isn't moving and he's like reading off the poem that his dad used to say to him every night before bed. And sometimes he blinks. I think he's supposed to be crying, but it's hard to tell, but his voice is doing this. I do think a lot of bad acting does come down to poor direction or poor script. However, I do think the bare minimum for actors has to be that you can convey at least two emotions convincingly. And for Dia Shaw, could not do that in this film. Um, Judy Dench was in this movie. I will say this. I prefer Judy Dench in green versus fur. Josh Gad and Judy Dench both did things to like change their voices in this. And we'll talk about Josh Gad in a second, but with Judy Dench, I don't know what made them think that this was a good character choice for Commander Root, which is Judy Dench's character. But the deep scratchy voice just kind of made her sound more sinister than anything. And also made her sound eerily like the kidnapper who kidnaps Artemis Sr. I just think it was a poor choice. I will say this about Josh Gad in this film, and maybe this is just me. I didn't realize how pretty Josh Gad 
Gad was before. And maybe it's because in the opening, when he's being introduced as the narrator, basically, and he's like this person who's been arrested and he's being interrogated and we're going to see his face while he talks into the camera the whole time. Um, I don't know why they kept focusing on his face. His face just looked very pretty in this film. And I don't know if that was because it was just very offset from the Hagrid cosplay his character was doing. Also, put on this, again, Batman-like voice <laughs> for his character to be the narrator. And I'm sorry, it slipped so many times. I don't know, Josh Gad seemed to at least be having fun with it. A nosy and smart who played um, Domovoy and Juliet, they're, I don't really have criticism for their acting just because, I don't know, they just didn't give us enough. My criticisms for their acting just comes from criticisms for how their characters were handled. Colin Firth was in this movie. I honestly just want to know what he got paid. Holly Short uh, was played by Laura McDonald. My criticism for her is really a criticism for the whole cast outside of Colin Firth and probably Josh Gad because Josh Gad, again, seemed to be having fun with this character at least, and then Colin Firth just wasn't in this movie enough. They all seemed to be saying their lines as if they had just gotten them for the first time. It was like, okay, and action. Also, I know in the books, he is like a criminal mastermind. That's like a whole element of his character. He's He's not supposed to be like a good heroic character. He's supposed to be the villain of his own story essentially. Because they kind of strip that from the movie itself, there doesn't seem to be a real villain attached to the story because they didn't really make one that was able to rival that of the new protagonist that is Artemis Fowl. But again, we don't want fans to complain, so we're gonna throw in a line about how he's a criminal mastermind at the end. Within the film's context, criminal mastermind is definitely pushing it. I would say he's criminal adjacent. Overall, movie bad. Did you watch Artemis Fowl? Did you read the books? Did you like the books? Did you like the movie? Tell me if you did, yes or no. Are there any other unreleasable movies that you were looking forward to in the future? Are there any movies with messy productions attached that you want me to know about? Can you get me access to Chaos Walking? Let me know, comment down below. And that's gonna be it, thank you so much for watching. Shout out to my patrons, thank you so much for supporting my Patreon. If you'd also like to support my Patreon, the link will be listed down below. If you'd like to follow me on all my social media, that'll be all up here, and that's gonna be it. Have a lovely day, goodbye. Some film adaptations of books are not good, but they are good enough on their own that they can in fact gain new support. Like for me, I never read the Percy Jackson series until I saw the movie and I was like, oh, this is like pretty good. There's a series. And then I read the books and I hated the movie. But prior to reading the books, I actually liked the movie. To be fair, I was an insecure middle schooler, so my standards were quite low. Thank you, Aaron, Adam, Alan, Elise, Bradley, Brighton, Beyoung, Cameron, Cameron D, Christopher, Chris, Cody, Colton, Crash, PC, Don, Elliot, Aaron, Essen, Evan, Feckless, Hopeless, Jason, John, M, Jonathan, Jordan, Kenneth, Kevin, Kim, Lee, Lisa, Manga, Matt, Matthew, Matthew S, Meme Lord Red, Michael, Michael J, Nathaniel, Prylock, Rob, Sam, Stefan, Frugal filmmaker Timothy Torben, Tom, Victor, Wendy, William, Zendry.